This morning, I woke up to a post notification from LinkedIn in this Adobe Illustrator group that I'm a part of. This guy was complaining about how he did not pass the Illustrator assessment test and he's been using Illustrator 7 for like 20 plus years or whatever. This is the post, we're just gonna ignore all that. Anyway, I've never heard of these assessments so I wanted to check it out and see if I could pass them. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can find this assessment. Actually, maybe I'll just Google it. One of the suggested results was assessment answers, like people are trying to cheat. Okay, I finally found the Adobe Illustrator skill assessment in LinkedIn, and I'm going to start this and see what happens. What happens when you click an existing anchor point of a closed object with the pen tool? The point is deleted. What would happen to fill the color of this object if you copied and pasted it into another Illustrator file where the document color mode was set to CMYK? The fill color would be converted to CMYK values. You select a new color in the color picker and want to see several variations in different shades and tints. Which feature would allow you to do this? I want to say color guide, but I could be wrong on this one. In the image below, you are attempting to use the join tool to remove the overlapping portions of two paths highlighted in yellow, but nothing seems to be happening. Why is this? I'm not even looking at the answers yet, but I wanna guess. It's because this whole path is selected instead of these two points. Endpoints need to be selected in both paths before they can be trimmed and joined. Why would you change the expand mesh value when using the puppet warp tool? It allows you to modify disjointed objects together. It allows you to see the mesh more clearly. It allows you to make greater modifications to an object. It allows you to work faster because modifying a large mesh requires few calculations. Larger mesh. Um, okay. This one, I actually wouldn't say that I know, but I wanna say it allows you to make greater modifications. I don't know, guessing on that one. If you want to scale a selected object filled with a pattern, what can you do to make sure the pattern is scaled too? Um, select scale strokes and effects. Eh, no, select size top, no. Select transform both from the transform panel menu. Double click the scale tool and select the uniform scaling. I wanna say select transform both. Uh, what must you do to art that you want to map onto a 3D surface with an extrude and bevel options. Expand its appearance, save it as a symbol, group it, rasterize it. Symbol. Why would you choose enable guides for nine slice scaling when creating a symbol? That's actually a really good question because they always ask me this and I have no idea what it means so there's no way I'm actually going to get this question right. I think I might look it up after this. To ensure that each instance of the symbol always maintains its original proportions when scaled, to allow instances of the symbol to be scaled without distorting the corners, to allow portions of the symbol to be exported as separate graphics, to include custom guides with the symbols so each instance is placed in the same position relative to the artboard. Hmm, I don't know, but I'm gonna just select the first one. You have access to the Creative Cloud, li Creative Cloud Library shown below, which was shared via the Collaborate Feature Library. This is all semi-new stuff. For a particular document, you need to use the 10% discount graphic, but change the fill color to green. You're not allowed to change how this graphic appears for anyone else within the library. So what must you do to accomplish this? Right click the graphic in the library and select place linked. Drag the graphic into your document and use properties panel to change the fill. Drag the graphic into your document while holding the option and window. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Drag the graphic into your document and click edit original. I think you want to drag it in your document and use a properties panel. We'll see, not sure. Which statement is true when you crop a linked image? A warning appears telling you that pixels from the original image file will be permanently removed. A cropped copy of the image file is saved at the same location as the current document. You can adjust or remove the crop later on to show the entire linked image. Cropped copy of the image file is saved on disk and linked to the Illustrator file. What is the difference between that and this one, that's interesting. So I actually don't know when I crop it, like it automatically embeds. So that would be the answer that I would have looked for. But I'm guessing that that means it's saved on disk and linked. So we'll see. This image shows a variable data project file for a business card, which properties of the color blocks variable are dynamic. I can't even see this damn image. Oh, I left my glasses in the car. I'm screwed. Okay, which properties of the color blocks variable are dynamic? I honestly, I don't even know what in the hell this means. I've never used variables or a data set. This is like using those 
graph tools, I think, maybe? That's the only time I've ever seen a data set, so I am not sure. I'm gonna guess that it's the colors. At least that was an option before I clicked it. I just pulled that out of my ass. Okay, you have designed the product label shown below. Your client wants the black circle to print as dark as possible and requires that none of the colorful logo elements show through the circle when the label is printed. What should you do? You've designed the product label shown below. I did not, that's horrible. I would never make a design like that. Your client wants the black circle to print as dark as possible and requires that none of the colorful logo elements show through the circle when the label is printed. What should you do? Use the appearance panel to add a second black fill. Fill the color, fill the circle with a rich black color made up of all four process inks. Select the circle and apply the multiply bleeding mode. Select the circle and turn on overprint fill in the attributes panel. Hmm, none of these sound like what I would do because I would actually just mask it so that those other ugly elements do not show there and make sure that it was 100% black. So I think what I'm going to do is fill the circle with a rich black color made up of all four process inks because that should create 100% coverage of all four CMYK colors and create 100% black. So we'll see. Using blank can reduce the file size and maintain consistency. Symbols, libraries, layers, variables. Symbols. Uh, what would you do in order to make the objects beneath the selected artwork visible inside the circle? Um, none of these things. Make a compound path, make a clipping mask. That's not actually what I would do, so this is stupid. Which tool was used to create this effect? This is the touch type tool. Oh, that was 15 of 15. Great work, you earned a badge. You're in the top 15% of 1.2 million people who took this. All right, so I passed the test, but it doesn't tell me how I did or what. It doesn't give me which answers I got right or wrong. That is so, so strange. I really don't understand. Only people who score in the top 30% earn it back. Your score is private to you and won't change as more people take this assessment. Okay, I'm gonna try to open that in a new tab because I want to go ahead and post my results. I just earned a skill badge for Adobe Illustrator. And I'm gonna add video coming soon. Hopefully, winky face, post. Okay, let's see. Okay, no, literally none of it. I don't know which answers I got right or wrong. I don't know how this is gonna teach me anything. I guess I'm gonna have to go to one of those other videos or posts and see. Whoa, this is a completely different test. Yeah, no, none of this is what I just did. So there's, there's a lot of like answers and things here. I've only seen like one or two, honestly. This was the first question I had. Dang, this is already question 29. There was only 15 when I took it. Well, I guess I'm not gonna figure out what I got right or wrong, but at least there's this one. It says select the circle and turn on overprint fill. Okay, so didn't know that. That's interesting. I'm not gonna read through a lot of these. I'm just looking to see if there's any images that I recognize. There are 76 questions in this. I'm wondering if you just get random questions from these potential questions so that everybody's quiz is a little bit different. But either way, I passed. That makes me feel really good. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. All right, before I end this video, I just wanna give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters. They've been super awesome. They are helping me continue to create videos like this. And if you wanna see me have more fun with graphic design related things, watch this video. All right, guys, that's it for this one. We'll catch you on the next one.